How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Ghost Lore number four. This is written by Colin Bunn and put out by Boom Studios. And overall, this book continues to be pretty fun and interesting. I like the idea, you know, we've heard before, troubled spirits having something that's clinging them to earth, some traumatic event, and every issue we get to see a spirit's new story. Here we get a few interesting things. As noted with the front cover, the girl is thinking about leaving, running away, and going on her own path, and the father returns to the church to see if he still fits in with this part of his life. Does he still want to be a pastor? So we're forcing essentially each character to their crisis moment. Does the daughter still want to be a daughter? And does the father still want to be a pastor? And it's some interesting stuff. Now, I think also if we look at the pacing structure of this book, um, I did a little research. I believe this is going to be 12 issues, and this, issue number four, comes before a two-month break for this book. The book will be back in October, but this really indicates that this is probably the end of volume one. We'll probably get three volumes of four issues each when we get the trade paperbacks, and this means end of Act 1, essentially. Three volumes, three acts. And yeah, this is a good place, a good pacing for Act 1. We've explored a lot of the relationships and milked it for a lot of what it's worth and set up the concept of the ghost coming and telling their story and the two different reactions to it. Overall, it's a pretty good Volume 1. Indie comics tend to get pretty short nowadays, and I was a little worried that we didn't have that many issues left, and I was hoping the book would progress faster. But knowing that there are eight more out of this, I'm really hoping the trajectory goes in the right way. You know, introduction, things getting bigger and serious, and then I'm really hoping for that epic ending. That being said, not 100% perfect. The father does make a decision in this book that I felt was a little bit uh, too impulsive and that he really didn't need to make and I'm worried that he might become more and more uh, stubborn and hard-headed and I liked nuance in his character more and I'm a little worried that he's gonna get too gruff in one note but I am curious where they go with these characters splitting off and going their own direction Hopefully, we get some interesting moments, but again, I'm hoping they don't get to one note, but that's just what we're going to have to see for the future. Still, this is interesting, and this is the forcing the moment to its crisis issue, and I think it's pretty fun, and fingers crossed for when the book comes back in five. Anyway, uh, if you guys want to see a little bit more of this book, I'll go ahead and switch to the close-up camera and show you guys a little more of the release. I'll talk a little bit more about the plot and show you guys a little bit of the art, but I won't be doing any major spoilers. But if you want a closer look, let's go ahead and switch over to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Ghost Lore number 4. Uh, right off the bat, a really fun cover. Let's go ahead and bring this closer to the camera. We see the girl in the story running away, and even though she might appear initially to be all alone, we can quite quickly see all these little ghosts uh, following her. A really good, cool, striking image, and really does play off that cool and kind of moody color scheme with these, you know, blues and pinks and fading into the green. Overall, it's a cool cover. I like it. On the back... We get the credits flash as usual, 04011, 4.99, rated 13 plus. And if we crack the book open, we get the credits, uh, written by Colin Bunn, illustrated by Leo Max, and We Who Are Judged was illustrated by Jonas Scarf. 
I do wish they put a previously on on here because it took me a minute to kind of remember, you know, what was going on. And actually, let's try not to get any spoilers in the frame. Um, as I probably said earlier, uh, this is the end of the first plot arc. So it's July right now. And if we look at this ad for the next one, October 2023. So yeah, July, August, September, October. That's only two months. That's not the biggest break, but I kind of worry I might forget a little bit of what's happened. So here's hoping that when they come back with issue five, they'll use some of that extra black space to just write a quick previously on, please. Uh, but anyway, after that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. I'll not be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to take a moment, analyze some of the plot, and say my piece on a few plot points. Uh, I'll try not to go too far, and I won't show you guys everything, but let's take a little bit of a look. Anyway, we open up with the young daughter, and she's writing a note to her father, saying, I know this is going to be hard, but I really need to get away and sort this out on my own. And through her section of the book, we'll get pieces of the notes with little insights, you know, um, we've been given this blessing or curse for a reason and maybe it's different for us and I have to figure it out and they also talk about maybe one of them will find mom and she's going to leave the note on the table for him and step out into the sunset so yeah this is right off the bat we do get the daughter running away as hinted on the cover now a lot of the meat of the story is again with the father though He's returned to his church, and he's making a decision. You know, they haven't had service in a while. Does he want to keep doing this? And that's when a mysterious drifter comes into the church and says, Oh, I just need to talk to someone. However, he starts to say some strange things that get the pastor to back off a little bit. Things like, Do you believe every confession? Some people have to be lying, but you, you'd forgive them, right? And keeps he keeps hinting that he has something he wants to say, but after he tries to brush him off, all of a sudden, we do have a ghost show up. And he approaches and starts talking to the ghost, never mind that the uh, mysterious drifter is still there, but from the look on his face, we know he expected this. He's in on it, whatever is going on, and the pastor is going to ask for the story. And there we get a, a pretty interesting story this time around. Um, this is the young girl, and they're going to watch a witch condemned to death. And she's going to be drawn and quartered, and all of her limbs are going to pop off. It's a pretty gruesome fate. And then we also have this pastor here, who just came into town not too long ago. And, yeah, that's not a Bible he's holding. That is some other strange book. So, needless to say, it looks like the people in this town have been duped by some mysterious figure. And we know from the previous stories in this book, things don't usually go great. You know, the ghost has something traumatic that's kept them there. It's, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be intense, and it always is, and that's always fun. So anyway, Ghost Lore number four, as an end to the first volume, does leave our characters in a pretty interesting place. I do kind of wish we got a little bit more out of it, but knowing that this is the end of the first act, knowing that this is the beginning, this is act one and all the setup, I'm hoping that this will lead to an even more interesting Act 2 and an epic Act 3. But yeah, really letting these characters feel around and find where they're going. I think this definitely has promise. And yeah, this is of 12 issues. So I really hope that it builds to something cool. So fingers crossed, right? Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. Uh, this should be my Colin Bun playlist, where you can see my reviews of all the past issues of this series, 
as well as other stuff he's done like Haro County Volume 1 and uh, The Unsound, that was a fun one. Uh, Basilisk, I reviewed a couple of those. He did that for Boom as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Colin Bun playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.